Hey, it's welcome. Yeah, so example four here. And um, yeah, so we introduced something new here, um, which is like when we factor x cubed um, plus x squared plus x um, plus one, and you can factor by grouping, we know that we get um, x plus one times x squared plus one. And we know that x squared plus one cannot be factored anymore. So that means this time that um, one of our two rational expressions, uh, which will combine to this, will have to have a denominator um, that is quadratic. And so then what's new is that when the denominator is quadratic, the numerator must assume linear form. So I guess we can say ax um, plus b. So the numerator must assume linear form when the denominator is quadratic. Uh, and um, otherwise, uh, this guy here, this other denominator, will have to be uh, the linear x plus 1. And so the numerator, as usual, is going to just be a constant. So let's call it c. Um, OK, cool. Uh, besides this, business as usual. And um, so that means that next, uh, we're going to have to get a common denominator for these two guys so we can um, make this thing, which is what we want as our, our final result, look more like this so that we can compare the right side and left side. So yeah, we got to get common denominators here so that this um, will look more like this and then we can compare um, left and right sides, yeah? Okay, so if you've watched the previous examples, that should be pretty obvious. Uh, and so um, to achieve that goal, we have to multiply by x squared plus 1 here. Uh, which means that we have to multiply by x squared plus 1 here. That way we multiply by 1. And then over here we multiply by x plus 1. And then uh, by um, x plus 1 here. Right? Okay, cool. And so then uh, now what we have is um, equal to um, c times um, x squared plus 1. Uh, and then plus um, um, ax plus b uh, times x uh, plus 1. This is going to be the numerator and um, the common denominator, uh, which is uh, the product of these two guys, or the product of these two guys, which is that is um, x cubed uh, plus, uh, sorry guys, um, so x cubed uh, plus um, x squared um, plus x and then plus 1 yeah okay cool now this here I will equal this if 1 is equal to if 1 is equal to this thing here yeah and that's c times x squared uh, plus 1 and then plus um, ax um, plus b times um, x plus 1 um, so yeah, um, so this is not confusing. Let me shrink this. Now notice that this here, what I'm moving is what we want equal to this original fraction, right? And so to make that possible, since the denominators are already the same, we need this numerator here, one, to equal that numerator there. So that gives us this equation, which we can then use to solve for our a, b, and c. Now, um, uh, in the previous examples, I showed you that once you get to this stage, there are two separate paths to take. One of them is to uh, strategically um, pick x values, and um, the other is to just do algebra here. Um, while we can use um, uh, the, uh, early, the former, which is strategically picking x values, I'm just going to choose to do algebra, because the algebra is like um, more brainless. So I'll do that. So um, if we distribute the C, then we get CX squared plus C. Um, and then we get plus, and sorry if um, it was insulting to call the algebra brainless, but um, yeah, okay. So that's what we do, right? And then if we do it in the order of the arrows I just displayed, then we get AX squared and then um, plus AX, right? and then plus bx, and then uh, plus b. 
And so if we collect like terms, we can, uh, that last B was uh, not well drawn, okay. So if we collect like terms and um, kind of factor, then first notice that we can put these two guys next to each other and then factor out an x squared. So doing both, I can write um, that I have a plus c uh, times x squared. That takes care of this guy and this guy. And then similarly, uh, doing um, factoring and grouping these two, we can write a plus bx, right? Um, so um, plus um, a plus b uh, times x. And then we go plus, uh, the constants are just this guy and this guy. So that's C plus B, right? Okay, C plus B. Now we can draw conclusions because if I get rid of this intermediate step, we know that what I have on the right side has to be um, equal to one. Wait, what? I tried to delete this, what happened? won't let me delete okay um, no it did let me delete okay let's scoot this closer so um, yeah what we have on the right side is supposed to equal one but wait if we write one so that it has three terms like these um, it must be um, well one at the end and before it 0 X and then before that uh, 0 X squared right Okay, so one term, two term, three term, one term, two term, oh, sorry, um, two term, uh, three term, right? So uh, from here, we deduce that uh, it must be true um, that C plus B is equal to one. And so let's do that. So it must be true that C plus B is equal to one. Um, and then also true that a plus b is equal to zero. Also true that a plus b is equal to zero, right? And also true that a plus c is equal to zero. a plus c is equal to zero. Okay, how do we solve for a, b, and c from uh, here? Well, let's see, this involves a and b, this involves a and c, this involves c and b. So first, uh, from this, let's uh, conclude that a, uh, and C are additive inverses, so A is equal to negative C. Then, uh, replacing this A with a negative C, we can write uh, this equation here, and then the uh, equation below it um, can be rewritten as negative C, which is A plus B, so negative C uh, plus B. And so from here, uh, we know that a plus b is equal to zero, but a is negative c, so negative c plus b is equal to zero. And so from here, we can conclude that um, 2b is equal to 1, meaning b is equal to a half. Yeah, okay, cool. And if b is equal to a half, since a plus b is equal to zero, it must mean that a is equal to negative a half. Okay, a is equal to negative a half. Now, since a is equal to negative a half, and a plus c is equal to zero, it must mean that c is equal to a half, right? Okay, so there, um, that's everything we need. We have a, b, and c, right? Okay. Um, so we have a, b, and c, and what we just said is that c is equal to a half. Could have used my lasso to get rid of this also, so um, c equals a half. Um, just like uh, B is a half and then A is negative a half. We no longer need this. Um, so what we're going to say is that um, based on what I've written in white here and what I've written in white here, that this um, here is equal to, we're done with the partial fraction decomposition, C, which is a half, um, divided by, um, uh, sorry guys, a half divided by X plus 1. And then um, plus a is negative a half, so negative a half um, x, uh, and then b is a half plus a half, and then uh, all over all of this divided by, I guess I could use a ruler, so all of this divided by um, x squared 
plus one and you're done. Well, uh, if you want, you can write this a little bit cleaner um, because of uh, the uh, convenience of having um, all these coefficients here in the numerator as being one half. And so what you could do is like write one half and then write uh, one over x plus one um, and then uh, it could be plus uh, one minus x or negative x plus one over um, x squared plus one. Yeah, okay, all right, this concludes this video and uh, examples five, six, and seven to come. Take care.